I'll be straight with you, for the past several months, I could care less about the graph view in, in linked networking, uh, note-taking apps. I mean, to me, it was just kind of a gravy on top, the icing on the cake, right? Like, how are we really using the graph view? But in version 0.9.0, the game is subtly changed once again. The developers have added a lot of interesting features, and they do two things for me that I've already noticed. They increase the level of joy that I have with working in Obsidian, working with my notes, making new notes. And number two, it increases the level of, of, of frictionless creativity. So in the following demo, I want to show you what I found so far, and this is just hot off the press, so what I found so far that has improved my workflow. Two major things coming up. Okay, so let's hop into this new graph. So here's the main overview. First thing I'm going to do, I'll collapse this side just to give us some more space. Let me open up graph view. It loads. I'm collapsing the left-hand side as well. And so here's my graph. I'm just going to center it, maybe zoom in a little bit. New features, check it out. Upper left, filters, and layout. There's a lot going on here. So let's just break it down. Let's play with each option. And then we're going to get into the two workflows that I've already that I can already see. These two workflows are going to help my creative process. I'm very excited about that. So hey, let's look. We have a search window where we can search for any term, any term. So let's just um, linking. I know this will come up a lot. I hit enter. And these are the notes that have the word linking in them. And I can zoom in further if I wanted to. Uh, that's kind of neat. Now let's just keep linking on and uh, I can add tags. So now we can toggle tags. And the, you know, there's kind of been this push to get rid of tags and make everything uh, a note, a direct link. For some reason, that didn't quite feel right. It felt like we wanted to maintain this sort of a weaker relationship between notes. And this is one reason, because now we can turn on tags and see which notes are connected. So these are all the notes that have linking, not just in the title, but it can be in the body of the note as well, and the associated tags. Don't worry, we'll dive into the examples. I can also turn on attachments. Nothing for this, I don't think, which is fine. Existing files only. All right, so now we'll notice that some files start to disappear. Because I haven't created a lot of files, I've only linked to them to create them in the future. And then we can also turn on orphan notes. All right, so these are notes. I would also call most orphan notes to be boats, which are blocks of atomic thought. They're kind of boat notes. They're just floating out by themselves. So now we've turned all these things on. We can look at this graph and kind of check that out. Now, another thing that's kind of neat is when we do create a link between two notes, it's a bi-directional link. But really, technically speaking, when you create the, the link, it's going from one direction to another. And so we can turn on arrows to make this explicit now. Now we can start to see that these arrows, they're pretty tiny on the screen but they exist and we can see, sometimes they point in both directions, like this one, and sometimes they point in a single direction, like this note to this tag. Okay, cool. Now we can get into, let's, let's take away the linking, and I hit enter to go back to everything. Okay, cool. Now let's go into the layout. We just turned on arrows, node size, it starts around one, and now we can make the nodes really big. I don't think you want to do that. Uh, let's go back to one. I find it's really good just to keep it there. Link thickness. Uh, again, I don't think the thickness really helps. Maybe you want to go with less thickness. Uh, it starts around one. So maybe we take it to, let's say, 0.7-ish and just make those lines a little bit less thick. Pretty awesome. OK, now we, we are going into some really neat gravitational, um, I don't know, meters that we can control. So the first is center force. So if we turn on center force, what's happening is the gravitational force is becoming stronger. So now all of these nodes are much closer to each other, right? Probably a little bit too much. Let's back that down. And let's just, for right now, we'll take it, we'll keep it at, uh, well, let's do 0.7, okay? Repel force. So this is, you know, how much they're pushing away from each other. 
So if I turn that up, they start to push away. Then we have link force, the strength of the actual links. And then we have link distance. So how close they are versus here, let's minimize, 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 move out. Now let's look at link distance. So this best way to do is to just look at one link and then see if I turn it on. The link distance expands. If I turn it down, the distance uh, decreases, it shortens. So for the most part, I find that th this layout information, you'll just want to adjust it once and then you'll kind of find the settings that work for you. So let's spend less time with the layout and now dive into a couple of use cases I've discovered. I think you can discover some too that will work for you, but I wanna point out these two because they are awesome to keep you creative. They're awesome to keep you in note making mode. So we're not just mindlessly wandering around this uh, Magilla uh, universe of notes, but we're actually diving in. We're using the graph to our benefit and we're making actionable steps forward. So now let's start with hashtag habit. I know I have a lot of notes with this. And we can see, I'll get rid of the tag actually, so I can see all the notes. Get rid of orphans, existing notes only, get rid of attachments. So these are all the notes I have that have a hashtag habit in them. And um, I have a couple MOC notes. These are maps of content. I have a lot to share about these in different videos. Um, but what I want to point out is existing files only. So this is where we start to toggle something. And it's important to toggle it just like I'm doing. So right now, these are only existing files. I toggle it off and you notice now we have these grayed out nodes. These are notes that haven't been created, but I've linked to them. So let's, let, let's imagine I'm focused on or you're focused on this project. You want to write an article. You want to just get your mind wrapped around habits. You've read some books you know, the power of habit, atomic habit, you just, you've had habits in your life and you want to make sense of this knowledge. As you're making sense, you might make an evergreen note. We'll get to that term later. You might make the evergreen note called habits carry a ton of hidden inertia, okay? Now, in the course of making this note, you link to this new idea called the flywheel effect. But you, you don't wanna create it right now, that's a whole nother thing, so when I, toggle existing files only and I turn it off, I can now see flywheel effect is here. And so what I'm looking at when I toggle existing files only off is I'm looking for easy wins. I'm looking for easy notes I can dive into and start to develop a little bit. So if I was in this mindset, I would um, toggle off and I would look in and be, okay, where can I go? Flywheel effect, Ooh, Frankenstein monster. That's one I've been wanting to flesh out. Uh, survival of the fittest, that concept I want to flesh out. So these are areas where I can dive into that note. Um, let's go into the flywheel effect. There's nothing here, right? And then I would start, I would start, you know, typing whatever I would like to, to flesh this concept out. So let's go back to where we were, get filters open. And that's the first thing. So the first thing that you can do is toggle existing files only, and then look for easy notes that you can jump into, right? We want to remove friction. Like, what do I want to develop? And this gives you a few launching off places. It's very a very practical way to stay on top of your notes and stay in a creative mode. So let's just explore the graph mode a little bit further. Here's another concept. Now I put that in, I hit enter or click that button to search. So these are all the notes that have hashtag concept in them. And I, I toggle on existing files. And so I'll toggle off and let's explore which note I might want to jump into. So if I toggle them off and I can say, okay, seasons, this concept of seasonality. And I want to make this easier for you to read. Seasons. It connects to two notes that have that haven't been made yet. The Enso and the Ouroboros, if I'm saying that correctly. So those are, oh, and Dragon and Phoenix. So certain concepts here that have a cyclical seasonality to them. 
And if the timing is right, I'm like, okay, let's approach this concept. I can dive in. I know exactly where to focus my time. And, it, and it's pretty cool to go in that respect. Okay. Okay, next up, let's explore one more hashtag with this concept. And this is uh, a note, a hashtag that I use for notes I want to explicitly develop further. And it's just hashtag develop. So let's search for that. And I can see existing files only. And then very quickly, what I'm going to do here is toggle that off. And now I can see all sorts of notes that I might want to develop further. Um, the movie Groundhog Day leads me to Bill Murray, leads me to another show that has that Groundhog Day concept, Russian Doll right here. And it can take me to the Buddhist concept of samsara. We can go in so many directions. Can you see the power of toggling existing files only? So once your library expands, this becomes really powerful. Now, the next one is toggling orphans. So I had mentioned this earlier, boat notes. So boat notes are blocks of atomic thought. If I create a new note and I haven't done anything with it, I'll, I'll, I'll put it as a hashtag boat. And this tells me this is a new idea, but I haven't connected it to anything. So it's, it's basically, let me turn on toggle orphans now. Oh, cool. So these are my boat notes. They're just floating around in the sea of our digital note libraries, ready to be uh, crafted, to be fleshed out, to be fully formed and connected with other things. So if I'm in that mode where I want to review these, these isolated boat notes, GraphView is fantastic. Hashtag boat, and we can toggle orphan on and off. Okay, let's zoom it back out. Back to the whole graph. Let's turn off tags existing files only. Let's not show the orphans. And so this is the graph as we'd normally see it. I hope you found this useful. This is hot off the press, so I'm sure there are other uses that you're going to find. Please share those in the comments below so we can all grow together. Um, but yeah, if you like this, please subscribe. There's a lot more to come. And if you're curious about what library I'm using here, this is the Light Kit. And this library can be yours. I'm going to be doing a webinar soon. It's going to be pretty, pretty cool, I think. Pretty helpful, too. It's been downloaded, I'm not sure, over 3,000 times. So it, it's provided a lot of help to a lot of people. And we'll be going over the light kit in the next couple of weeks. Two days ago, I wasn't planning to shoot this video. But, I mean, graph view. With these filtering options, it's powerful. And I just had to share it. So I hope you found... Uh, the ability to toggle existing files, the ability to toggle orphan notes, and to practically use that to enhance the joy that you have with the program and, and the creativity that you can maintain with the program. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell too so you know the new videos that are coming. And I promise you there are many videos coming this month. And also, this graph view, it's so new. So if you discover some cool feature, some practical use case, please share that in the comments below so we can all grow together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found value. I really appreciate your time. Until next time.